Welcome everyone to the uh, City of Middletown Planning Board meeting, June the 2nd, 2021. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, a little housekeeping for our transcriptionists. Um, all board members are present this evening. Uh, Mr. Atkins is here. Mr. Welch is here. Uh, Mr. Krogan is here also. All right. And Mr. Schumar. And Mr. Schumar, our engineer. First on the agenda this evening is the approval of May 5th, 2021 Planning Board Minutes. I need a motion for approval. Mr. Higby, I need a second. Ms. Witt, discussion? Roll call. Mr. Madden? Yes. Mr. Numchek? Yes. Mr. Brito? Yes. Ms. Witt? Yes. Ms. Hewson? Yes. Mr. Higby? Yes. And I vote yes. Um, excuse me. Just a general statement I need to make. Um, that uh, I have to point out that all first-time applicants appearing this evening are considered a preliminary hearing and that the planning board may or may not choose to act or vote on those applications tonight. That goes for each and every uh, one on the agenda this evening. Uh, first of all, on the agenda is, uh, and we have, to, we have a slight change in agenda, will be uh, Barry T. Rec, 48 to 54 North Street, a ground floor commercial use and 24 residential units, three levels. I have Barry online. Uh, I have unmuted him as well as Chris, who is with him. Gentlemen, you've unmuted yourselves. You should be good. Great. Good evening, board. Um, this is Barry Carrick. Um, I'm the architect for the project and uh, here representing uh, the owner, Carly Management. Um, Chris Renato is with me, a uh, site engineer. Um, and what you're, you have before you is, um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the property, 48 to 54 North Street. Um, really a classic brick building that's been abandoned for quite a while now. Um, and our proposal is to rehabilitate the property um, by introducing six uh, small commercial spaces on the ground level, um, some of which will be uh, hopefully accessed uh, from the adjacent um, city-owned property, the park where the trail is gonna pass through. Um, we've been discussing the possibility of that with uh, Mayor Stefano, and so far have a, a favorable results from that. Um, also on that side uh, would be the access to the 24 apartments that would be above. Um, all, all of ground level would be commercial space. Um, it's set up to be uh, divided into six relatively small spaces that um, adhere to the DMU uh, uses um, for small businesses. They're all set up to be under 1,500 square feet, um, but can be combined uh, to make a space that's closer to 3,000 square feet if, if that's the uh, tenant demand. Um, we have above it, uh, well, I'm sorry, on that side um, of the building that we're developing is also the entrance to the apartments, uh, come into a secure lobby which is not accessible to from you know by the businesses um and go up to eight apartments on each of three floors right now the building um i guess we we'd uh classify it as a three-story building right now with a mezzanine the second level is built out to be only about a, a third of the floor area starting from the back the entire two-thirds of the second level is open to the, to the third level two-story space um, our proposal is to complete that floor level um, and make a full four-story building out of this. So each of those three levels would have eight apartments um, ranging in size from, I don't know, probably about 1,000 square feet to 1,300 square feet, mixture of one and two bedrooms um, with amenities, their own uh, heat systems, their own washer dryers. Um, each one, if you take a look at the elevation, that we propose the 3D drawing. Each one will have its own step-out balcony from the living areas. Um, 
and uh, just trying to make an, an attractive, um, uh, rentable property uh, for people to come to. Um, so that in a nutshell, the building will have an elevator. Um, it will have obviously all code compliant egresses, fully sprinklered. Um, I guess in a nutshell, that's kind of what we're proposing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we're going to uh, open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to comment on this application, please step forward. Uh, Ms. Hanson, do we have anyone online? Not at this time. Uh, Ms. Tu, do we have any uh, written statements? Do we have anyone on the telephone? Okay. Uh, then we'll move to the board. Any questions or comments from the board? Just a little background, uh, we will be putting in the resolution the need for an easement I onto Jerry's right. Park. Okay, that's in the plan, and it is something that we discussed with the applicant before they, in the preliminary hearings. That's for the windows and the balconies and the storefront, correct? Correct. The, the, the area facing Jerry's Park and even there's going to be a small sidewalk along those commercial spaces on the ground floor. That will be in Jerry's Park. Walter, did you have a chance to look at it? No. Any? Yes, and, uh, I, I see no problem with it at all. Thank you. It would be nice to have somebody in that building. It's gonna, been vacant for quite a while. Mr. Adkins, do you have any comment? Uh, I did a site visit today. Okay. And uh, they got their work cut out for them, but it, it looks good. good right. Homes. So, but it's, uh, everything's pretty solid and it's going to be fully sprinkled and all, you know, have all the systems it needs to have. Great. All right. We'll go back to the public hearing. Uh, Mr. Numchuk, did you want to make a comment? You know, just I was wondering about the safety of the people on the balcony itself. How how bit large are the balconies? Are they um, you going to have be able to put tables on them and sit out there, or is it just um, a balcony that you cannot go on? Mr. Tarek, uh, it, did you hear the question? Oh, I'm sorry. I guess he did. Um, it's a it's a balcony that you can go out on. They're proposed right now to be only three feet deep. Um, so I don't know that you'll be getting tables out there. I certainly wouldn't want barbecues or anything like that. Right. Um, so we can, you know, that, that's a negotiable, I mean, you know, if making it less than three feet is something that you, you feel might make them safer, we could certainly do that. I think, the once you start going through the construction phase and the plans with the DPW and the fire department, I, I believe you can, you can hack that out. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't take them away. I think they're a great idea. No, I, I, well, your your point is well taken. You don't want them too big. <laughs> you don't want too much going on the outside of the building. That's right. fine. Agreed. Okay. A question about the basement. Now, this is below. The basement is below ground. Fully below ground. So, and it looks like you're going to have a gym down there. Um, we're we're proposing. I need to work through. The logistics of that obviously but for for the tenants only yes it's a small gym available down there and there's commercial space for storage just for the commercial properties yeah i see that yep. okay yeah each each one each property currently the design is for each property each tenant to have uh private access to that space um and also to have access to an egress down from there that would go out towards the towards the parking lot towards the back and also the elevator, like the first floor will be commercial. That'll be special just for tenants that be able to get up and not people that come into the building for the Correct. commercial space. You, right. They'll, you know, I don't, we haven't gotten into the, the uh, particulars, but I'm assuming it'll be something like a tenant card access for the entry door. Mm -hmm. um, so, so when you come into that lobby, the elevator and the stair are tenant only, uh, apartment, residential tenant only. Okay. Anyone else from the board? There, one more other question, too. There's no roof access to any of the tenants, correct? No. 
No. Okay. Currently not. All right, we'll move back to the uh, public hearing. Ms. Hansen, has anyone come online? This time. Not at this time, sorry. <laughs> okay. And obviously, Ms. Two, no one's on the phone. Okay. We'll go back to the board one more time, one more crack at it. Any other questions? Are you proposing doing anything with the existing concrete parking area that's off of Center Street? Um, I don't know yet, to be honest, uh, partly because, um, you know, that, that, that could turn into something quite nice, depending upon who the rear tenant in the commercial space is. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the owner is open to having a small restaurant um, occupy one of these spaces. And if it were to be that space, for instance, we might be able to get some outdoor dining back there. Um, so I, 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 I don't know yet. We'll probably clean that up somewhat, uh, change that fence out um, and, and develop that uh, to be something, but I, I'm, I'm not sure what yet. Back for that anyway. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And, and yeah. just so the board knows, anything they do commercially, they'll be coming back to us anyway for approval. Right. So we'll have a chance to look at that again. Right. All right. No more questions or comments? Anything else, uh, Mr. Nubchek? I guess we're going to have to waive parking on this, correct? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. There's a couple of things we have to do for this one. It's a DMU zone, architectural review board, waive parking, and it even include the easement and resolution. Okay. Anyone else? All right. On a resolution. Have to close the public. Nope, oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Uh, that being said, I'm going to close the public hearing and move on to the resolution for uh, 48 to 54 North Street, ground floor commercial use, and 24 residential units on three levels. Uh, subject to the city of Middle, this uh, building is subject or approval subject to the city of Middletown DPW and city of Middletown Fire Department inspections approvals, and when necessary, approval of the commissioner of public works. Uh, also, because this is in the DMU zone, this applicant will have to uh, uh, meet with the Architectural Review Board to do any facade work or exterior work on this building. Uh, we have to waive parking because of where it is in the downtown area. Uh, the applicant will also have to obtain any necessary permits and follow the permitting process, codes, and ordinances of the City of Middletown and the State of New York, if applicable. In addition, if throughout any of the review process, the project is deemed to require bulk, bulk requirement tables, the applicant will supply said tables through an architect or engineer licensed in the state of New York. I will need a motion for approval. Mr. Brito, second, Ms. Hewson. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Madden. Yes. Mr. Numchek. Yes. Mr. Brito. Yes. Ms. Witt. Yes. Ms. Hewson. Yes. Mr. Higby. Yes. And I vote yes. Good luck. Great. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Have a good evening. Next on our agenda this evening is 25 Myrtle Avenue and 91 Prospect Avenue. Commercial space, office, and residential. All right, I think we're going to move forward. That applicant may not be here this evening. They have some work to do on their project. Uh, we had them on the agenda because we have a public hearing that's open. So moving on, our next uh, project is 108 LaCour Street, LLC, 9-29 Canal Street, residential apartments. Good evening. Good evening. Peter Cirillo. How you doing? Good. How's everybody tonight? Good. Um, at, a, at the last meeting, basically, um, there were, if I may say, very few comments. Um, I did uh, talk to uh, Mr. Chumard about uh, his comments, and I did address uh, his comments in a letter. Um, again, since there was very minor changes to the drawings, I actually spoke with Mrs. Two. And uh, we decided that, um, or I guess she might have spoke to uh, 
to someone on the board, maybe, maybe uh, your, yourself perhaps, and uh, we did not have to resubmit the drawings. Um, so at this point, I'm going to look more to you as to what else we might have to do. And Yes, I think we're have a near the end of your, your review process, and I believe the board is, uh, is satisfied. Um, you've answered all our questions, and of course, you've been responsive. Um, we have a public hearing open, so we're going to go back to that public hearing for any comments. Uh, anyone here wishing to address this application, you may step forward. Ms. Hansen, do we have anyone online wishing to comment? Not at this time. Ms. Tu, anyone, any further written comments from anybody? And no one on the telephone. Okay, I guess we uh, are to the point where the, uh, the board has a final shot if they want to make any other comments. Mr. Schumard, were all your comments addressed? Yeah, the, the changes that I made to the plans were really the building owner. That that was probably the one change. And then, uh, it was a minor, minor, almost a minor the, the neighboring property uh, has, has a I don't want to interrupt them. Right, so that was the most recent survey I could find by Dan Janish, who was a surveyor of the property at the time. He has since retired, sold his business, to engineering properties. Um, I did request a, a quote from them to update it, but uh, again, that would, if the board wants us to show that accurately, we would have to go get a new su updated survey and then bring it into the drawing. As, so. as far as I'm concerned, I'm sorry. As, as, as far as I'm concerned, that is an incidental uh, feature on the map. Okay, that's fine. And I know we were also talking about the Canal Street centralized sanitation pickup. I don't know if you were ever got a plan for I, that or not. I was not. And we can to... always add that at a later date. Right, right. We okay, can. as long as we're, we're all aware of it. It's gonna be in the resolution as far as your sanitation plan, so. And one last thing, I guess just, uh, you did bring it up uh, last month, is the ARB. We have to go in front of the ARB, so we have started that process. Um, but we wanna do some research largely on the windows because there are over 400 windows there so that's a big decision as to what we pick okay so that's fine as long as you're in contact with them yep okay i know mr atkins last meeting had said the unregistered vehicles have to be removed um i know mr atkins are they still there you got to you got to start moving them. I, I just spoke to Mr. Leiter and some have been removed and he's slowly getting rid of them. They are the neighbors and correct. Yep. All right, cuz enforcement will enforce it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anyone else from the board? Any other comments? Okay. First, we're going to take care of a little uh, business, public though. Public hearing is still open. Pardon me? Public hearing is still yeah, open. public hearing. All right. Okay, I keep forgetting that. Uh, and I'll, I, w I will ask one more time, too. Ms. Hansen, has anyone come online to comment public hearing-wise? Not at this time. Okay. Then I'm going to close the public hearing at this time. And we have to do a little business. We have to uh, have a negative declaration. We did lead agency last time. And now that you've submitted your full EAF, we have to do a negative deck. Before you do that, did we get comments from the county? Ms. Two? Okay, be subject to them if we get in. Okay. They're running a little behind. Yeah. A month or so, or two months, <laughs> sometimes four. It's okay. All right, uh, on the negative declaration, I, I'm going to need a motion from one member. Mr. Brito, I need a second. Mr. Numchek. On a motion of Mr. Brito and a second by Mr. Numchek, 
that the planning board, based upon all of the evidence submitted by 108 LaCour Street, LLC, seeking a site plan approval and special use permit for the construction of a mis mixed use residential apartments and commercial occupancies, the planning board makes the following determination with respect to the environmental significance of the proposed project located at 9-29 Canal Street in the city of Middletown, section 35, block 3, lot 24.1. Based upon a reasoned elaboration of the potential environmental impact of the project and after a thorough review of the project's environmental elements by the city's engineer and planning board and the planning board here, the planning board hereby determines that the proposed project by this resolution making a negative declaration of environmental impact as that term is defined in the environmental conservation law in part 617 of the New York State Secret Regula Regula Regulations. That being said, uh, any discussion? I'll make a roll call. Mr. Madden. Yes. Mr. Numchek. Yes. Mr. Brito. Yes. Ms. Witt. Yes. Ms. Hewson. Yes. Mr. Higby. Yes. And I vote yes. That takes care of your neck deck. Thank you. Okay, upon resolution then, um, it's going to be subject to the City of Middletown DPW and the City of Middletown Fire Department inspections, approvals, and when necessary, approval of the Commissioner of Public Works. Also, uh, this applicant will have to submit a sanitation plan to be approved by the Commissioner of Public Works. Uh, we've already mentioned that, that you'll need to do, go to the Architectural Review Board for any facade work, signage work. Also, there's going to be uh, agreed upon construction and temporary easements with designated time frames related and related construction goals. Said easements pertaining to any city of Middletown owned land to become permanent if agreed upon by the city and the applicant. Any easements and or agreements pertaining to the Acme parking lot that are required for the approval of Canal Street 108 LaCour Street LLC project will become part of 9 Canal Street. In other words, anything that happens with the Acme parking lot runs with the Canal Street project. In the addition of, even though we know this is a, just a strong recommendation, the addition of exterior lighting to ensure proper lighting as per the city code, middle, city code of Middletown, i.e. your rear alleyway. And I think uh, then, then the applicant will obtain all necessary permits and follow the permitting process codes and ordinances of the city of Middletown and the state of New York, if applicable. In addition, if throughout any of the review process, the project is deemed to require bulk requirement tables, the applicant will supply said tables through an architect or engineer licensed in the state of New York. I need a motion, Mr. Madden. I need a second, Mr. Numchek. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Madden. Yes. Mr. Numchek. Yes. Mr. Brito. Yes. Ms. Witt. Yes. Ms. Hewson. Yes. Mr. Higby. Yes. And I vote yes. Good luck. Good project. Thank you very much. Good evening. And thank you for letting uh, the other applicant <coughs> oh, change the agenda. No problem Appreciate it. Thank you. Next on the agenda, Anthony Devos, 19 Preston Street, Auto Repair Shop. Good evening. How are you doing? Good. How are you? All right. Uh, again, my name is John Fuller. I'm a professional engineer representing the applicant, Mr. Devos, who's uh, in attendance as well this evening. Um, to operate a public garage for motor vehicle service at 19 Preston Street. <coughs> building is approximately 40 by 60, just over 2,400 square feet at the end of Preston Street. It had previously been vacant but had been occupied <coughs> by the Lewis Sign Company. Um, Mr. DeVoe would like to move his operation from Otisville to this current location uh, in order to uh, service his clientele throughout, um, <coughs> which are throughout the Middletown area. Um, he uh, will have a short, a small fenced in area just adjacent to the building to uh, um, have a maximum of 15, uh, I'm sorry, 10 cars 
or 10 vehicles on site. There's proposing no outdoor junk or outdoor storage of any nature besides those 10 vehicles um, or any other waste <coughs> outside of the building. Um, that all that's been indicated on the map. Um, and as indicated, he does uh, general auto service repair, tune-ups, brakes, things of that nature. Um, he also has a 24-hour towing service as well, which he would uh, look to operate out of the uh, out of the facility as well. Um, we done the uh, public mailings. I believe this is for a public hearing this evening. And um, with that, I can answer any questions that the, the board and or the public may have about his application. Great, thank you. Uh, we have a public hearing that is open from the last time, so we're going to go there first. Uh, Ms. Hanson, do we have anyone online wishing to comment? Not at this time. Ms. Two, anyone for the written comments or telephone? Okay. I'm going to go to the board then. Any uh, other comments or questions? Okay. Did we uh, show anything with the propane tank? Um, we had indicated that currently there is no gas service to the facility that he would use a propane tank to heat. Um, we also, in the meantime, in the past month, we determined that the natural gas line does run down Preston. And it's approximately 100 feet away. So that's actually a better alternative for him. And he's, you know, he's willing to bring natural gas in and a little propane. Okay. Because yeah, so I didn't see... So there won't see... be propane? What's, I'm sorry? So there won't be propane? Yeah, I mean, you're committed to doing... Yeah, he's committed to doing the natural gas, so there'll be no propane. Yes. It's 100 feet away, and he can bring it to the building. Great. Thank you. Mr. Numchak? I noticed on the bulk table requirements, the year, rear yard requirement is 20 feet and you only have 12.9 is that an issue well it's an existing condition that runs i mean the building again is an existing condition it does have some non-conformities that we call it um not sure you know it's again pre-existing they wouldn't condition. need it if no. it was pre-existing non-conforming and the business continued to operate it'd be one year uh otherwise they'd have to come back Did you have an opportunity to respond to uh, Mr. Schumard's comments, uh, the letter dated May 24th? Um, I, I have not prior to this meeting. I, I did receive okay. them and reviewed them. Um, I think, you know, obviously they're technical in nature. I think they're, I can easily address all of his comments. Um, I mean, I can walk through them if, if, if you would like. Whatever. Well, yeah, the, the, the major thing is he has to correct, he has to refer to the city of Middletown standards, not the town of Walk Hill standards, or way beyond the standards. That was whatever. a carryover mistake. Yeah, yes. and there's a EAF form that you have to complete, make sure we get it. This will all be subject to, I'll put this in the uh, in the resolution. Right. Okay. And I, I still might add uh, the propane tank, since it wasn't on the plan, if you change your mind, I'm going to put it in the resolution that if you do use propane, that you'll have to go to the Middletown Fire Department to get the proper location and the proper protection for the tanks from vehicle traffic. Yeah. All right? Just Understood. to give you up front. Okay? Let you know. Flesh. Is, is yes. there going to be any changing of oil or anything with that with the cars? or? No. I mean... Um, Tires and oil are not his predominant business because it's there's obviously there's many other competing uh, companies that do that. Um, you know, I, I can let Mr. DeVoe speak to what he actually does as he represents dealerships. Actually, at last the last meeting, Mr. Numchek, that came up. Okay. He we did ask him, and he has a uh, waste oil and waste product service that he already has contracted with, and that's how he removes any waste and waste oil from his property all right thank you sorry i didn't mean to not a problem <clears throat> yeah if anybody has any other questions for me as far as um what i do and what i plan to do i'm here to answer yeah all right we're going to go any, anybody else from the board have any other questions and i'm going to go back to the public hearing real quick miss hansen has anyone come online not at this time Okay, then we're going to close the public hearing. Yeah, no one here from the public or on the phone? Nope, no one's left. So I'm going to close the public hearing. And on a resolution for Anthony Devos, 19 Preston Street. And it's actually going to be called the pu Public Garage, correct? Correct. Yeah. Public Garage. Um, 
Subject two, City of Middletown DPW and City of Middletown Fire Department inspections, approvals, and when necessary, approval of the Commissioner of Public Works. And as I stated, uh, your hours of operation, by the way, according to the plans, are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., Saturday, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., and it, you have a 24-hour towing service. This is why you have the uh, compound, impound lot for 10 vehicles. Uh, also, that uh, in case that you do uh, decide to use propane, uh, you will contact the Middletown Fire Department to get the location, the proper location of that tank and the proper barriers to protect it from vehicle traffic. Uh, and uh, you have a couple of items on the May 24th letter from the engineer that you need to correct that will be subject to also. All right. Uh, also, the applicant will obtain all necessary permits and follow the permitting process, codes, and ordinances of the City of Middletown and where applicable, the State of New York. In addition, if throughout any of the review process the project is deemed to require bulk requirement tables, the applicant will supply said tables to an architect or engineer licensed in the state of New York. Uh, I need a motion. Mr. Brito, second. Ms. Hewson, discussion. Um, just, Theron, if they go to gas, do they have to contact you? Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call. Mr. Madden? Yes. Mr. Numchek? Yes. Ms. Mr. Brito? Yes. Ms. Witt? Yes. Ms. Hewson? Yes. Mr. Higby? Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you. Very good, thank you. Also on the last application, the uh, the applicant did make the statement himself about the condition of cars and the condition of the yard that it shouldn't look like a junkyard. Just, just for the note. Thank you. All right. Next on our agenda is El Gallo de Oro Inc. 86 to 90 North Street. And he's proposing a bar. And do we have the mailings, Ms. Tu? Yes, Thank you. Sir, just state your name for the record and your intention. All right. Good evening, Board of Middleton. I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, my name is Fausto Linares. Uh, I, I am here presenting, representing my parents, Alicia and Elisa, uh, Alicia Linares, and my uncle, Fernando Linares. Um, what we are requesting is to open a bar operating Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays from 12 p.m. to 2 a.m. We plan on closing Wednesdays and Fridays and Saturdays. We plan on operating 12 p.m. to 4 a.m. On Sundays, 12 p.m. to 1 a.m. We shall have recorded live music and DJ. We plan on having a bar where everyone is welcome, a good environment. Um, my parents have had a restaurant for seven years down by 52 Cottage Street, and we've had a liquor license for five years with uh, no, no problem. Okay, thank you. Um, we're gonna open the public hearing. Anyone from the public wishing to address this application, please step forward. Ms. Hansen, do we have anyone online? We do not. Ms. Tu, any written responses? And no one on the telephone. Okay. Then we're going to go to the board for any questions or comments. Yes, Mr. Madden. Does your family have a security plan in place? Yes, we have. We plan on having two to two to four employees if it gets approved, and two of them being security guards. Two to four employees. Yes. Two so of them it could being be two employees, and they're both going to be security. No, two to four. Uh, Four employees, two being security guards, and my uncle shall be one employee, and then we plan on having another waiter slash waitress. Anyone else? I was wondering, I know you gave the hours of operation, but could you please repeat those? Yes. Uh, Mondays and Tuesdays and Thursdays, we plan on operating from 12 p.m. to 2 a.m. Wednesdays shall be closed. 
and then Friday and Saturday from 12 p.m. to 4 a.m. and then Sundays 12 p.m. to 1 a.m. And if you guys have any questions about the building, also the owner of the building, um, Robert Hope, is here. Uh, what is currently upstairs from your bar now? Proposed bar. Yeah, upstairs is. Uh, Can you state your name? Your name, sir. Record. State your name. This is Robert. <laughs> Yes, you can take that off while you're. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's fine. Robert, they will manage their property. Uh, the second floor is uh, two school, but this is um, one center office. They are working daytime, so I don't think there any any interference with each other. It's like eight to five, you know, normal hours, and the building is very very good. Uh, you know, isolated, and they are not going to affect the second floor in any way. There's nobody, you know, no no apartment or anything, just regular hours. And uh, there's no apartments, then people living up on top. No, yeah. Any question? Just, you know. Is it necessary to be open till 4 a.m. on uh, Fridays and Saturdays? Couldn't you leave it at 1 or 2? That's up to them. <laughs> if it becomes a problem, we could uh, operate at um, closing by 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. But um, when people like to drink, they kind of like to stay up. But if that becomes a problem, then we shall change the hours of operation. Because you are downtown. It isn't like a... Uh... Yeah. Well, we want to kind of have something where people can come enjoy a drink and have a nice time and relax like after a long day of work. I don't know how the other board members feel well, about the 4 a.m. I, I wanted to ask about the 1 a.m., but yes. Um, did you, maybe I misheard you, but you said from 12 p.m. to 1 a.m. on Sundays? Yes. Yeah, that I have some concerns about that, not to be a stickler. No, um, it's fine, it's but fine. Yeah, there I understand. Are, even though it's, you know, downtown, there is some residential in there, and I can't imagine the noise disturbing some of the neighbors and I don't know how the other board members feel about that. Well, he's proposing 4 a.m. closing times on Fridays and Saturdays. I, mean, I No, I agree with you on that as well. I just, um, at least that's Friday and Saturday night, but I still think it's too late myself. Um, but on a Sunday night right before work, I'm thinking that might be late too, in addition to what you're saying. Keep in mind we can suggest those times as long as he follows the legal state liquor authority rulings and uh he could always even though this might be long he can always decrease it yeah. however he needs with his business you know to make it work for him and there is noise ordinances that are controlled by the police as well right yes i forget the i think it's 60 decibels whatever that is that goes beyond your building you'll be responsible for yes sir you know the, the police will violate you if if that happens that's all also there is a place of worship nearby but that's not our privy to decide whether you get a liquor license or not that would be up to the state of new york to decide that okay? yes and if i may say um before the covid uh happened um down by 52 cottage street my parents had a restaurant where they operated karaoke's on uh saturday nights and we um we closed around, I'd say, 12 a.m., and we didn't have any problems with the police, no nothing. Good. Are you also going to be serving food here? Uh, no, sir. I also just want to clarify, a, a, I think, the statement you made. You said recorded live music. I'm not sure what that means. Is it just going to be all recorded music? No uh, live bands or anything of like that like that? No, no, just well, just like the radio and just music that people request. And then on the weekends, we might have DJs. Okay. So it's not really live music. No. Okay. I'm sorry, sir. No, that's all right. Just to clarify, I have no judgment on your family's establishment at all. I'm sure you guys are great. I'm just thinking of the use of the pr property itself, because if you guys moved out and somebody else came in, then they would have the same use for that property. Mm. But yeah. No problem. 
I have a question for the fire inspector. Do you know what the capacity is for in that will be for in there? I would have, no, I'd have, to I'd have to calculate that out according to the plan. I don't have it off the top of my head. It is a fully sprinkled building. They do have two means of egress. Mm. Well, occupancy will be determined by the fire department when the time comes. Yeah, I know. You understand that, right, sir? Yes. You understand that, right? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Atkins. And also, if I could, uh, the entire upstairs is commercial. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the back side is all commercial. So that entire building is commercial, or residential now. Okay. Well, that's, that's good. What will be your name? What will be your name? What are you calling yourself? Uh, El Gallo de Oro. Oh, okay. So it is going to be Yeah, the Golden name. Rooster. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to go back to the public hearing to see if anyone from the public wants to address the application. Ms. Hansen, anyone online? Not at this time. All right. I'm going to close the public hearing and go back to the board members. For one more shot, any questions or comments? Mr. Welch, any issues? No, not at all. There was a bar there before. It was. <laughs> I know that where they own now. I'm sorry. I know where they own now, so they they have a replicable business. Okay. I think this is a plus for downtown. And Mr. Atkins? Yeah, I I piggyback off what Mr. Welch said. I've never had an issue. Uh, with their fire inspections or with their other business. It's all very, very well kept, uh, very good. Uh, so I have no issues at all. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Close the public hearing already. Board members, no more further comments. Okay, I'll try to put this into a resolution. Before you do that. Yes. Um, was there concerns about the hours of operation? Did the board want to discuss that or? Well, it seemed like the board thought it was a little late on some days. Um, I'm not so sure how we can restrict that. Um, That's it, up to the applicant. And it's controlled by the city of Middletown, the police department, and the fire department if they're breaking the CO requirement. Um, noise ordinance is controlled. There was a bar there before. Okay. Yeah, I think we have to rely on the liquor authority and... Our, our codes and ordinances to follow through. All right, anyone else? Okay. A resolution. On a resolution for El Gallo de Oro, Inc., 86 to 90 North Street, Bar. Uh, subject to the City of Middletown DPW and the City of Middletown Fire Department inspections, approvals, and when necessary, the approval of Commissioner of Public Works. Also, we have to add that you're in the DMU zone. So any facade work or signage that you put up, you'll have to contact the Architectural Review Board, all right, to get approval for any work on the outside or signage. Uh, we have to waive parking, which simply means you have none. You're in downtown. Yes. And your hours of operation will be, uh, let me see if I get this right, <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday will be 12 p.m. to 2 a.m., Yep. Friday and Saturday, 12 p.m. to 4 a.m. Sunday, 12 p.m. to 1 a.m. And you'll be closed on Wednesdays. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Um, the applicant will obtain all necessary permits and follow the permitting process, codes and ordinances of the city of Middletown, the state of New York, and I'm gonna just add on this one, anything to do with the State Liquor Authority, which is the state of New York also, if applicable. In addition, if throughout any of the review process, the project is deemed to require bulk requirement tables, the applicant will supply said tables to an architect or engineer licensed in the state of New York. And of course, we're gonna have you make sure, full understanding that you are gonna follow the noise ordinances, okay, and use of security to maintain order okay I see great thank you thank uh, you i need a motion miss witt i need a second mr brito discussion roll call mr madden yes mr numchek yes mr brito yes miss witt yes miss Houston. yes 
Mr. Higby. Yes. And I vote yes. Good luck. Thank you for your time. Have a nice night. You too. Hey, Tony. Anthony. Yes. Uh, they have to go to the Architecture Review Board for that, uh, the dupe they put new glass in. Uh-huh. And they didn't go to the Architecture Review Board to have that passed. So they, they did a beautiful job on it. Right. But uh, the owner of the building has to go to the Architecture Review Board. Okay, well, I, I mentioned in the resolution that they, they, they must because they're in the DMU zone. But you're saying they've already done work. They've already done work, so it's right. got to be addressed immediately. Okay, well, I would suggest then you contact the Architectural Re Review Board immediately so that they can review what's going on. Your owner, the landlord, whoever owns the building, you need to contact the Architectural Review Board so that you can uh, review anything that you've already done to your facade already. Okay? Thank you, Mr. Welch. All right, next on the agenda. I am going to murder this name. I apologize in advance. I don't know even how to say it. Jang, Miss Jang or Mr. Jang. 8 to 10 East Main Street, residential apartments. I have no idea how to say that. <laughs> I know. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, this is Chun Feng. I'm the architect for the project. Uh, Mr. M Mrs. Jiang and uh, Mr. Wu, uh, Mu, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Yeah. Just before you get into your uh, dissertation, uh, we have the mailings. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Sorry. Uh, this project, I think uh, a lot of people are familiar with. Um, there, um, there is a su supermarket on the first floor, and the second floor, third floor, uh, w w have been vacant for a long time. And they got the planning board approval for the third floor, five apartments about two years ago, but they didn't uh, finish the job. And recently they started to do some work there uh, without getting permit or whatever, you know, the building department is shutting down. And now I did this drawing for them. Uh, the uh, third floor is still five apartments, but they utilize a portion of the attic uh, we can call fourth floor um, as part of this uh, five apartments. And uh, the second floor, uh, we have uh, 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 three apartments. Uh, it's uh, one three bedroom, two, two bedrooms. So this, this uh, eight apartments, um, before they rely on two interior staircase, one is pretty good, is leading to, towards the, the entrance on the main street. Uh, so we keep that entrance as an egress. The, the second uh, um, stair is an interior stair, so it's not safe. So to provide a second means of egress, we uh, 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 drew a um, path uh, on the roof. Uh, there was existing uh, escape um, at the corner of the, the supermarket outside wall, and we're going to modify this uh, uh, escape. Uh, because they're going to also put some uh, meters there, electric meter there. So the drawing showed that we will utilize that the corner as an escape, but it's not escape, it's a formal steel staircase. Yeah, so that will pro provide the second means of egress for the, uh, the uh, apartments. And uh, the building uh, is going to be fully sprinklered. Um, and also, um, you know, the, all, all the, the uh, equipment, HVAC, HVAC everything is shown in the drawing. Um, yeah, that's about it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we're going to open the public hearing. Anyone from the public wishing to address this application, please step forward. Ms. Hansen, do we have anyone online? Do not. No. Ms. Tu, do we have any written responses? No one on the telephone. Okay, let's go to the board for comments and questions. While well, the board is thinking a little bit, uh, Mr. Welch, any issues? We just discussed it now, and um, the, the, the second way of egress uh, it is awful long. So Theron will take care of that. Mr. Adkins? 
Yeah, I have concerns about the egress uh, across the rooftop and, and down the side there. Okay. I, I don't have the measurements for it. Okay. We, we would have to get that. And uh, the fourth floor and third floor paths of uh, travel for egress too. I think we need to, to dive into that a little bit more with the code. Yeah. And make sure that we're, we're meeting what we need. I know you're going to be fully sprinkled and fully fire alarm, but I, I have concerns about that rooftop egress. I, mean, I think we got to sort that out. All right. Is, is this an issue that the board can look at it as a subject to, and then you guys work it out with plans? Or would you prefer that we not approve it this evening and adjourn it for future consideration so you have time to sit down with the architect and, and see if you can't flesh out the issues and, and come back with a, a, a solid plan for, for, for the fire? Can, yeah, can, I, I, can I explain it a bit? Yeah, yeah uh, because the mean, uh, the egress path uh, is or, 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 um, although long, but uh, the 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 second you you go out of the roof, you know we we have uh, the steel exterior door there, so you know the majority portion of the path is outside already, uh, and the downstairs is sprinklered, you know so. Uh, the, I have a egress calculation there. Uh, we're, we're, we're well within the, the requirement. Like a 250 feet, we have, we have only 100 something feet. But uh, when you go out of the outside the building, that's outside already, you know, so. The only thing concerned may be the, 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 the structural um, stability of the roof. But since the whole building is sprinklered, you know, so we shouldn't have any problem there. And also the roof, the, the path is roofed, with a roof. It's not going to be like uh, under snow, you know, people can have to walk on the snow. Every, from the point you go out of the steel door to the point you go to the uh, uh, parking lot, is all, all with a roof. So you're telling me there's a roof over top of the roof? Yeah, there's a path, and then you can build like a serious, I'm sorry, serious post, then put like a shed. It's open. It's open to the air, but uh, you 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 shed the so the snow won't be on top of the path. Same idea as a fire a fire stick. Yeah, yeah, same same thing. Yeah. Let me ask this question: if, if this issue cannot be resolved, would it substantially change his plan uh, for his apartments on that floor? I mean, I'd have to go out there and look at it, but I, I would feel that yes, you know. Okay. I understand what you're saying. I I have serious concerns about a path of egress along a roof. I know it's going to be fully sprinkled, but we just had a fully sprinkled building burned to the ground, so that's that's all not right. you know always I, the best. So I'm going to suggest because I I can tell by our inspector that he's not comfortable at this point in time for approval just yet. I'll do what the board wishes to do, but I'd like to adjourn it for future consideration so that the architect has time to sit down with our inspectors and work out all those problems before we make a final approval. And maybe think about, is there another way that you can do it? I mean, is there another? Yeah, the only way then you have to utilize the interior staircase, then you have to create a long corridor uh, on the other side department. of the building and all the way to, to East Masonry. Well, I that, think we can... That will we'll cut into the, the square footage a lot. <laughs> you know, you could just waste a, a whole long corridor for the e egress. That's yeah, only to save, possibly save lives and make it safer. It would be worth it if that's what you have to do. I agree. Okay, well, I'm just putting it out there, but I think for our inspector to say he's comfortable, <coughs> yeah, exactly. that makes the board comfortable. So, well, why don't we see if there are any other concerns so that he can deal with? Oh, well, absolutely, all. yes, no, no problem. Does anybody have any other questions? Do all the apartments meet the minimum I'm requirements? Just ask that. <laughs> yes, I, I believe so. What will be the total um, number of apartments in that building after this is all? If this is all eight. approved, eight. Eight. Yeah. Nearly yeah. eight. Six. It's more than that. Seven. We have five on the third floor and fourth floor, and three on second floor. And I see they're all one bedroom, right? No, no. no uh, uh, the, the second floor has a, 
uh, two two bedrooms and one three bedrooms because the square footage is about the same uh, as the third floor. Mm -hmm. But the third floor is uh, 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 two studios and the three one bedrooms. I get eight, eight apartments. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll go back to the public hearing momentarily. Uh, Ms. Hansen, anyone on the line? Not at this time. Okay. I'm going to keep the public hearing open. And I'm going to ask the board for a motion to adjourn so that uh, the fire department and the architect can resolve uh, the travel issues in the corridors. Uh, I need a I need a, a motion, Miss uh, uh, Boy, Miss Houston. Second, Mr. Higby. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Madden. Yes. Mr. Numchek. Yes. Mr. Brito. Yes. Miss Witt. Yes. Miss Houston. Yes. Mr. Higby. Yes. And I vote yes. So we're going to adjourn for future consideration and get with Mr. Uh, Atkins to work out your issues, please. Yeah, we will discuss. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, next on our agenda is Angelica Guaman, which is, the actual address of record is 91 to 95 North Street, Bakery, but a slight problem with addresses. Good evening. Good evening with everyone. How are you? Good, thank you. State your name and what you want to do for the record. We just hang on just a second. We have a mailing, uh, Martina. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Go ahead, ma'am. Yeah, uh, in 89 North Street, I'm trying to open a bakery and just a bread and coffee for, for in the morning for breakfast. And I'm trying to open for 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. Okay. We have to open the open the public hearing. Anyone from the public wishing to address this application, please step forward. All right, Ms. Hansen, do we have anyone online? We do not. Ms. Two, anyone, any written responses, any telephone? Okay, we'll keep the public hearing open and we'll go to the board for any questions or comments. Uh, just for the record, we'll probably have to just rework the application a little bit to get the proper address. Mm -hmm. Okay, you kind of made a little mistake with the, with the address and the location. We understand uh, where it is. We've had our inspectors look at it so they, they know where it is. It's actually across the street from the one that you were given. 91 to 95. 95 North Street, correct. It's right across the street. Everything is correct as far as the the site plan. Yeah, the site plan, the interior plan, that, that's all correct. And uh, it was just a, a, a minor mishap on her part to put the wrong address in. So the pit, this picture is not correct? This, that, it, that You are correct. That is incorrect. That's right? incorrect. Okay. Yes. It's right across the street, Mr. Nunchak. Mm -hmm. Will so you be she, open every day? Yes, for, yeah, okay. seven days. So Sunday to Saturday. Mr. Welsh, any concerns? No, uh, it'd be more that, uh, for Mr. Atkins. Hey. I did a site visit over there with her. Uh, everything's pretty straightforward. They know what they need to do. They have proper egress. Uh, pretty straightforward. Good to go. Okay. And I have this right Monday through Sunday, 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. Is that correct? Okay. Okay. And it, you say you, you have a limited, it's going to be limited seating too in a juice bar? Yeah, just going to be juice just for natural juice. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's all. All right. Uh, just so you know, the Middletown Fire Department will, whatever their inspection is, will tell you your occupancy, how many people you can actually have in this juice bar at any one time. Okay. Just so you know. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. 
Um, back to the public hearing. Ms. Hansen, has anyone come on? No, they have not. Okay, then I'm gonna close the public hearing. Go back to the board one more time for any questions or comments. Okay, on a resolution for Angelica Guman, 91 to 95 North Street, Bakery, uh, which is located um, subject to City of Middletown, DPW, in the City of Middletown Fire Department inspections, approvals, and when necessary, approval of the Commissioner of Public Works. Also, this property is located in the DMU zone, so it's subject to any architectural review board if you're going to put any signs outside or any work on your facade of the building, you have to contact the architectural review board. Okay, thank and you. And they'll direct you uh, on what you can and can't do. Okay, thank okay. you so much. Yeah, uh, we have to waive parking. Ms. Houston, do you have a question or? I just want to make the motion that I grab the parking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, wait, we have to waive parking. And the hours of operation will be Monday through Sunday. 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. The applicant will obtain all necessary permits and follow the permitting process, codes, and ordinances of the City of Middletown and the State of New York if applicable. In addition, if throughout any of the review process, the, pro the project is deemed to require bulk requirement tables, the applicant will supply said tables through an architect or engineer licensed in the State of New York. Now we need a motion. Ms. Houston. Second, Ms. Witt. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Madden. Yes. Mr. Numchek. Yes. Mr. Brito. Yes. Ms. Witt. Yes. Ms. Houston. Yes. Mr. Higby. Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for everyone. You're welcome. Uh. Next on the agenda, I have Frank Sienna, 108 to 110 Sprague Avenue, car detail shop and office. I have Frank online and I have, I believe it's D. George. Uh, I have unmuted both of you. Oh wait, yep, if you wanna unmute yourselves, you should be all good. Hello. Hello. How you doing? Good. Uh, who's on the other side? <laughs> who's on the line? My name is Frank Sienna, and D. George should be on another line. Okay. All right. J well, just so everyone knows, do we have the mailings, Miss Two? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just so everyone knows that uh, the issue has come up here that um, this, this piece of property has uh, some issues. Uh, what's been determined is that this has been vacant for more than a year and that the non-conforming use is no longer allowed. Uh, the only way to really proceed with this uh, project is that you're going to have to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals in order to get your use back or ask for their permission and their approval in order to come back to us to get your approval for your car detail shop and office. So you'll need to go to the- But why won't we make- Go ahead. Uh, sorry. Why weren't we made aware of that before we did all this, you know what I mean, pre-work ahead of time? I don't know what you did ahead of time. We reviewed your application and this is what transpired. I don't know what work you did previous to that. Well, we weren't made aware of that. That's what we had to do. Um, well, you have a public hearing. The a public hearing would be opened. It would be held for future consideration for you to go to the zoning board to obtain your variance. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna open the public hearing. 
Uh, anyone present want to comment on the application? Please step forward. Good evening. Joanne Ives Cudney, my husband George Cudney. Say that again, I'm sorry, ma'am. Joanne Ives Cudney, this is my husband George Cudney. Fine. Um, we are concerned about several issues about that becoming a detail shop. Okay. Uh, number one is, is there a catch basin? They're gonna to have to wash the vehicles and there is a brook behind the house that tends to flood very often. So their water usage would affect us. We live right next door at 112. Anything else, ma'am? Um, what? Okay. Um, there's a, about an office. Is that for their use or do they intend to rent that office space out? And if they intend to rent out, what would go in there? I'm also concerned about noise factor. We live in a quiet neighborhood. Also, the car situation, how many cars would be there? Would it run out into the street? Um, as of already, um, they're not maintaining the property. The lawn has not been cut all spring. It is way over growing. Uh, basically, that's it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Sienna? Yes, sir. Could you uh, uh, answer the question of if you, uh, what part of the building you're gonna use for your detailing and then you plan on renting uh, for an office space, or what, what's your intent with the building? That's my intent. I plan on using the garage part as auto detailing and the offices as, as whoever, you know what I mean, is interested in for offices. There's no problem with the water because that'll be, there'll be, catch, there'll be uh, drains and there'll be a water oil separating unit going in for the water. The hours of operation will be eight to five, and there'll probably be only be a five or six cars there at any given time. As far as the grass, there's a little patch of grass in the front. It's probably like a, a four by four piece of grass that, you know what I mean? I, I'll have to take a look. That's the only thing I, I think I'll have to address. Okay, that'd be good. So the office space, will be intended for the detailing shop? No, the office space, I'm gonna to try to get three offices out of the space because you have 5,200 square feet. It's a rather large building. All right, so you try to rent out three offices. Correct. Okay. There's two separate, you know, there'll be two separate entrances there as the, the way the building is laid out. You know what I mean? Which would be easy enough to do. Okay. Yeah, there, there's a courtier door that you could easily rent the offices and go right straight into the into the detail shop. Okay. We've made, we've maintained everything there. We've had the property since since the uh, winter, and we have plowed. You know what I mean? As as it snowed mm -hmm. until I rent it out. You know what I mean? I'm not going to do any cosmetic work on it until I get all the approvals. Okay. Well, you're taking the first step. Correct. Okay. And uh, just just so the public knows that when the time comes and we set up a resolution, you know, number of cars will be in that resolution. You know, purpose of the building will be in that resolution, so that and, and it, of course it, it's checked out ahead of time so that it's properly zoned. So if it calls, he's allowed to have offices or a detailing shop. That's you know he he will be within his rights of a, as a landowner to do that. But we just have to make sure that he follows the rules. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sienna, when you come back to us, maybe you can update your plan with the oil water separator because um, it will have some sort of a tank that our engineer is probably going to want to know about. Um, I don't see it on your plan at all. Well, it wasn't noted that it have to be. D, are you online, D? 
Uh, yes. Okay. Was that a question that they had asked you that you had the answer? Um, well, I don't have the answer right now, but uh, when we come back to the planning board, we'll add um, drainage info on the plans. Yeah. We'll have well, to see the I'm plans very anyway. familiar with it because I, I have a shop now and I had another shop on North Street. So I know that's one of the requirements that you have is, is that you do put an oil separate unit in it when you're doing detailing or any kind of automobile repairs. I don't even know if they, they would want that because it's just detailing. But I would put that in just for a safety precaution. And we'll, we'll discuss that during the preliminary, long before you come back for your next uh, planning board approval anyway. Would a, and maybe I'm over, uh, maybe I'm thinking too far ahead, but would a short form seeker be required for this since it's a lot of drainage and things? No, I don't think so, but we'll, we'll know more as, as we progress. Yeah. They, have to get, they have to get by the zoning board. They have to get zoning board approval first, and then they can come back here. Well, and this is allowed in the C2 zone, correct? Correct. It is. Right. Yeah. Now, everything was okay until they discovered that their, their use had run out. All right. Well, the businesses that um, rent the office space, will they be subject to the same hours of operation, or will they have to come back here? Well, we, as, as soon as he gets a renter or d decides whatever commercial office is going to be there, they'll have to come before us. Okay. Uh, all right, so we're going to have a resolution so that uh, uh, the 108, 110 Sprague Avenue car detail shop and office has to go to the ZBA to work out their uh, nonconforming use issues, and then they'll be back. But I need a motion to adjourn for future consideration. Before you do that? Yes, sir. Oh. Ma'am. No, sorry. I'm sorry. I just want to quickly ask the other members. Do I mean, I, I kind of feel like the short form would be needed for this. And I, I know I'm getting ahead of things because I know he has to go to the ZBA first. Yeah. But to save the applicant time, I would want to mention it now, if possible. Do other members feel that way? I mean, there's... He's, uh, uh, he's going to have to go through the process. Okay. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so I need a motion to adjourn for future consideration. Mr. Brito, uh, motion and second by Mr. Higby. Discussion, roll call. Mr. Madden? Yes. Mr. Numchek? Yes. Mr. Brito? Yes. Ms. Witt? Yes. Ms. Hewson? Yes. Mr. Higby? Yes. And I vote yes. Mr. Sienna, please go see the Zoning Board of Appeals. See Martina for an Contact Martina, too. She's the clerk. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Next on the agenda, Crown Fried Chicken and Coffee Shop, Inc., 203 Dolson Avenue, Takeout Restaurant. How you doing, sir? Good evening. Do we have the mailings, Miss Two? Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Please state your name for the record and your intent. Yes, sir. My name is Gagan Singh, and uh, we are opening up a store, Crown Fried Chicken, on a 203 Dolson Avenue. Okay. We're going to open the public hearing. Anyone from the public wishing to address this application, please step forward. Ms. Hanson, anyone online? Not at this time. Uh, Ms. Two, any written responses? Anyone on the telephone? No. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go to the board for any uh, questions or comments. There'll be a sitting area to wait or a sitting area to eat? Mm, it's just for six to eight people to sit there. They can eat. They can. But there's no bathroom for the public? No. I think it's it, your intention is mainly takeout. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Um, of course... The fire inspection and the, the building inspector will make sure everything conforms. It's kind of an existing building, an existing mall, parking. And just so that we know that your uh, hours of operation, as far as I read them, is Monday through Sunday, 7 a.m. to 1 a.m. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions from the Board of Commons? I'll go back to the public hearing. Any comments from our inspectors? It's kind of cut and dry, right? Okay. Go back to... 
I, I have a question. Uh, are we talking about a fried chicken and a coffee shop, like two separate? Because I know I went out and did a site visit in the hibachi or the, the buffet. Mm -hmm. They've already put up a new wall and mm -hmm. separated that out. So they're creating, you know, more uh, storefronts. So I'm just, is it a coffee shop and a fried chicken place or are they all one? It's all one. It's all one. Okay. And you're going to need, when you put your uh, cooking hood in, you're also going to need to install a fire alarm? Yes, sir. Okay. And that'll be with the fire department inspections. When I read that off, that's what that is all about, DPW inspections and fire department inspections. Okay. Um, that being said, I'll go back to the public hearing. Anyone online, Ms. Hansen? Not at this time. I'm going to close the public hearing, go back to the board one more time for any questions or comments. Okay, on the resolution for Crown Fried Chicken and Coffee Shop, Inc., 203 Dolson Avenue, Takeout Restaurant, with hours Monday through Sunday, 7 a.m. to 1 a.m. Yes, sir. Okay, subject two, the City of Middletown DPW and the City of Middletown Fire Department inspections, approvals, and when necessary, approval of the Commissioner of Public Works. The applicant will obtain all necessary permits and follow the permitting process, codes, and ordinances of the City of Middletown and the State of New York where applicable. In addition, if throughout any of the review process the project is deemed to require bulk requirement tables, the applicant will supply said tables through an architect or engineer licensed in the State of New York. I need a motion. Ms. Hewson, I need a second. Mr. Numchek. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Madden. Yes. Mr. Numchek. Yes. Mr. Brito. Yes. Ms. Witt. Yes. Ms. Hewson. Yes. Mr. Higby. Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Get with the DPW for permits. All right, thank, you. thank you, sir. Have a good night. Okay, last but not least, I need a motion to adjourn. Before you do that. Oh, you have something else? Um, Go yes, ahead. just going back to number one on our list, Frank Villano, what did we do with that? There wasn't a motion, though. Yeah, last time we did it. No, tonight you didn't make a motion to keep it open for future consideration. Oh, we have we to do it again? We're going to keep it open. Yes. We have to, we have to do the motion again? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we have a motion to continue the future consideration. Uh, we had a motion from Ms. Houston and a second by, from Ms. Witt. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. Madden? Yes. Mr. Numchek? Yes. Mr. Brito? Yes. Ms. Witt? Yes. Ms. Houston? Yes. Mr. Higby? Yes. I vote yes. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Okay, it doesn't stay open. All right, last but not least, I need a motion to adjourn. Mr. Numchek, second, Mr. Madden, all in favor? Aye.